welcome back to another episode of Your Questions, My Answers. Tonight we have uh, well, almost a live studio audience. We've got one person in the background and we've got Jerry listening in, but uh, unfortunately you won't hear him, so uh, it really doesn't mean much. But in any case, <laughs> the, uh, as, as Jerry would say, I'll speak for him, the standard disclaimer does apply here, and that is we reserve the right to be wrong. And uh, if we say anything that just sounds odd, uh, completely out of left field, just totally wrong, whatever, uh, get a hold of us and we'll do our best to uh, print a tiny little retraction in the next episode and uh, move right along. But uh, in any case, well, as, uh, as we mentioned before, we're joined by Tom and Ed and uh, Brian as well, as always. So uh, just to get things kicked off, Brian, what are you smoking tonight? I am smoking a uh, Padilla uh, Obsidian. Uh, it doesn't actually say it anywhere on the cigar. I was looking for it for a clue, but yeah. uh, it's it's uh, apparently a, a fan favorite on the uh, the, you know, the Stogie Review fan forums, and I started smoking them, and you know I I find it pretty good. So I'm a little ways into it. Uh, we had some technical problems to start out with, so I had a chance to really get into this. So uh, uh, you yeah. know, how about you, Walt? Well, I'm smoking an Oliva Serie V in a double Robusto and uh, pairing it up with a uh, Lancaster Brewing Company milk stout, uh, followed by water after that. And, uh, and you know, just as you had mentioned, we're fighting the te technical difficulties here. I've got a little bit of a problem with Skype going on. I lost my internet connection completely. Uh, you had some sound issues, but I think we're all, you know, sh squared away now and ready to go. So, uh, Tom, Ed, what are you smoking tonight? Got anything, you know, in a cup? You go with it? What's going on? Uh, yeah, we, we're smoking an uh, El Rico Habano. Nice full body cigar. And what are we pairing it with here? I'm pairing it with uh, Crystal Geyser Natural Spring Water. Yeah, me too. Uh, nice little spring water. It's a pretty awesome smoke. I've never had one before. Yeah, it's good. It's a nice full I've, body. It's and recommended from uh, some random guy I don't know who. Yeah. but anyway yeah one of our customers was smoking one I decided to go ahead and smoke one I haven't smoked one in over a year so it was time check it out and very good very good who makes the El Rico Habano that's not George Rico from uh, Grand Habano cigars right from La, Flor uh, La Gloria Cubana yeah I knew the brand I just couldn't place it yeah, I was thinking when you said the, the, the Rico and you said Habano, I was thinking Grand Habano is George Rico or, you know. I, I forgot to mention, uh, just to inter interject there, I've got my, my standard giant cup of coffee with me, so I'll just throw that in there. But uh, anyway, that's all I had to add. <laughs> well, before we get started, I just got a message from Jerry. He is smoking a Hoya de Monterey Dark Knight 1066, and uh, well, with that... Segment one is sponsored by Camacho Cigars and their new 10th anniversary Camacho Corojo. And uh, that brings us to question one, and since no one else wanted to read it, I'll go ahead and, and read this one. <laughs> All right, question one comes from Andrew and Rebecca through the contact form. And uh, they say, hey Stuggy Review, how are you guys doing? I have two quick questions. First is this, hey Walt, I have heard you talk about how much you like your Blazer Torch Lighter, and I have made up my mind that it is a great lighter that needs to be placed beside my humidor. I came to this conclusion after Sunday when uh, me and my friend sat down with a tea and Cohiba cigars that she brought. Yes, my smoking buddy is a girl, so go figure that one out. Uh, and, oh, and she loves the stinky ashtray that I got, got for us to smoke with. Uh, and in place of the Sopranos to watch, and, wow, I'm confused. I'm just going to plug right along. Okay, paraphrased. Next question. Question well, the, the first actual question. I bought an adjustable hygrometer and I even got the Boveda calibration pack at 75.5% relative humidity and for whatever reason I let it stand for two days and it read 77%. I turned my hygrometer down two notches and I let it stand for another two days and check it again and again to get 77%. Then repeat the process again and still have the same. I have done this four times now and about to run out of notches. I was wondering if there is anything that could be going wrong. Uh, is it the hygrometer's fault? And do I need to get another? Thanks for all the help the Stogie Review does to help spread the word and love of cigars. Keep up the fantastic work. 
So, uh, Brian, what do you think about uh, his uh, hygrometer problem? Well, I'm, I'm not sure what to make of it. It sounds to me, I had a, a hygrometer, an analog one, that was, uh, that was like that, and I, I decided not to use it just because, well, it was analog, which I, I don't like analog hygrometers. And yeah, it, nothing, it, the little screw, the adjustment, no matter what you did, you screw it and get it just about right, let go of it, and pop, it goes back to where it was. So um, it could be, if, if it's one of those, I would say pitch it and get a get a digital, you know, something that you, you don't need to, you know, screw around with in that way. Um, you know, it, it could, you know, it could just be a flat hygrometer. I mean, these things do happen. It could be broken. Um, uh, Nothing much, you know, no, nothing much is coming to mind on that, really. Uh, it, it, I'm thinking it's, it, did they, I don't know if they said analog, but uh, it sounds like it, it, it could be. So, I, you know, my, if it is, my recommendation is, is go get a digital. And if it's a digital and you're having this trouble, I would recommend taking it back to where you got it and getting another and trying again. Uh, you know, what, what, what do you uh, guys think, uh, Tom and Ed? Well, in my opinion, I thought if it was a uh, digital, which I think it is, that he uh, adjusted it too many times. You know, once you uh, get it set the first time for approximately 36 hours, I would think that I have a ton of them over here, and, and I never had a problem with them. And uh, as a matter of fact, I thought if he put it back into the uh, Yumi pack again, that would be the wrong way to do it. Uh, but I do mine uh, about 36 hours and take it out. I have no problem with it. It just uh, stays pretty, uh, pretty accurate. Uh, but I thought maybe he did it the wrong way. If it's the other kind, then uh, throw it away, yeah. and, you know, and uh, just get uh, a digital for sure. So are we we kind of had a little argument about this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Ed and I. Well, the the thing is, we didn't understand the question. <laughs> I mean, but are, do we perceive the question the same way now? Yeah, yeah. I think he, he he did it the wrong way. That's what I think. See, I'm I'm taking it as the guy has a digital hygrometer. He puts it in the 75.5 calibration pack for 36 hours. It reads 77, so he turns it down two clicks. Puts it back in the pack. And uh, he's still getting these same results where it's two percent too high. So I think Brian may be onto something as far as maybe the hygrometer's bad. Yeah, it could be. But uh, the first time a calibration pack at uh, well, that's the he bought a seventy-five point five percent calibration pack. Yeah. So it should read that essentially. That is, right. Yeah. So I think right. the, I think the hydrometers it could hygrometer be, is screwed up. Could be a bad hydrometer. Yeah. And, and that's my two cents. Yeah. If it's a uh, one of those um, old type ones, you know, they could be bad, and I would definitely get a digital. Yep. Because I never had a problem with my digitals, so. True. And how about you, Walt? Well, I was thinking when he uh, when he said he bought the industrial hygrometer and he turned it back two clicks. Uh, the first thing that I thought of is. Uh, Mark Neff sells these uh, these little puck-looking uh, hygrometers, and they have an adjustment knob on them. But uh, when you would, when you turn it down two clicks, I think there's a button on the back. It might be a recessed button. You, you have to actually set it. So you can turn it all you want, and if you don't actually set it uh, at that particular relative humidity, it's not going to hold the setting, and it's just going to kind of float. So uh, I would flip the hygrometer over and look for a button. If you don't find a button, it's just uh, your run-of-the-mill digital hygrometer. Um, I would just say note the note the difference for now, and maybe look into getting yourself uh, a new one. Uh, you know, if it's constantly reading high, even though you're you're adjusting it, I think it pro it's probably uh, it needs to be set. You know, physically you need to push a button and, and lock in that number. But uh, that's just my my take on it uh, from reading over the question. What about anyone think anything new? I think you're right, Walt. Uh, I happen to have one right here in my hand. Uh, and there, there is like a recess button on there, so I yeah, think every time right. you when you do that, adjust it, you have to yeah, click you have it to in click basically. That in so and maybe lock, he's not doing that. Lock it in, yeah. I didn't notice that until you mentioned it. Yeah. But he, Walt's talking about this kind of hygrometer. Right. right. Well, I'm glad you knew about that because uh, 
I I don't know. I I don't think I have that kind. Yeah, I don't I don't have that one. Um, and you know the thing is, is if if it's consistently reading seventy seven percent, you can rely on it. You just know it's two percent high. You can you can still use that. You just you know use it as a reference and just make a note or something right on it. Pl you know plus or minus you know right minus two percent, and it'll still work if that's the only problem with it. You know. But, I mean, if you can get a replacement for it, uh, by all means, you know, get a replacement for it. Or look for that button if it's, you know, if it has that button. Yeah, they have a plus or minus uh, error anyhow. So, yeah, you, if it reads 77, yeah. you can still use it, no yeah. problem, absolutely. And it is indeed a set button, though. I'm looking at the instructions yeah, here. Yeah, it's so. a set button. That's yeah. what I'm thinking. Yeah. That's all I got. All right, well, Andrew and Rebecca, I hope we, uh, we solved your, your hygrometer problem. And uh, that brings us into question two. Brian, why don't you take us away? All righty. Uh, let's see. The question number two comes from Paul via the contact form. In place of RH beads, I found a product called Exquisite Cat Pearl Fresh Beads for litter boxes. Okay. That, re that resembles and performs like the expensive RH beads. Eight pounds of Exquisite Cat Pearl Fresh beads for thirteen ninety nine. What's your opinion on this product versus the heartfelt beads? Thanks, Paul. Uh, well, what do you think? Uh, I'll throw this over to uh, Ed and Tom. What do you think about these Exquisite Cat Pearl uh, Fresh beads versus the uh, the heartfelt industry beads? You, uh, you you use the beads anyway, I, right? I I looked at them a little bit. I I think they're, is it cat litter? I mean, that's the impression I'm getting from the Googling I've done. Yes, but, uh, it's, it is actually cat litter. It's unscented cat litter, essentially, is what it is. Right, and it probably works fine, and it, I've even read it's the same stuff that the heartfelt beads are made out of, but uh, I don't know, I got like maybe 1,500 bucks worth of cigars, and I figure I'm gonna spend, you know, a couple extra bucks and get the heartfelt stuff, or, or uh, you know, any of the other cigar mini stuff or whatever and, and just kind of make sure that I'm not doing anything wrong, basically. I mean, they probably will work good, but I guess I'm picky like that. I, I mean, I use, I stick with the beads in the Cigar Oasis XL because, you know, that's that's a lot of money, so. Yeah. I mean, if you're going to spend that kind of money. Just my opinion. What about you, Ed? Yeah, I mean, I don't use them here, but it just seems that... Uh, you know, if you have quite a bit of money invested in cigars, you want to use something that's been used on cigars. Yeah, the puck, or you can get gel. Or <laughs> yeah. Uh, I wouldn't want to use cat litter unless I know for sure that it's going to keep my cigars in perfect shape. Cat litter and cigars, not a good combination. Not a good combination to me. <laughs> but maybe it is. I'm just not going to be the one to test it. Yeah. Yeah, you guys have the same opinion I do. I mean, if, uh, if I've got an expensive cigar collection, I want to use what I know works. Uh, I want someone else to do all the trial and error for me. I don't want to be the guy to screw it up. Uh, and, you know, with the, exquis the exquisite cat beads, I've or this, this actual cat litter, you know, I've heard some people use it to success. I haven't heard too many horror stories about it. But, uh, you know, the, the stories I've heard that were that were good, I, you know, I can count on one hand. So there's not a whole lot of people out there that I've heard from about it. So I'm not willing to to experiment with my cigar collection. Uh, now there's also another product out there. Uh, I think it's an agricultural product. Someone was telling me that uh, you can contact these kind of farm dealers and they'll actually send you like eight pound sample bags because that, that's a minor or that's a small quantity compared to what they deal with. And uh, those are supposed to work pretty well, but again, you know, I haven't dealt with these. I haven't heard of a whole lot of people dealing with them. Now the RH bead and the Heartfelt Industry beads, you know, I've heard countless, you know, great success stories from them. So, you know, I'm willing to use them and and not give it a second thought. But uh, yeah, the uh, the cat litter, it just it it worries me. I mean, it just seems kind of gimmicky or hokey. And uh, I don't know. I'd rather have someone else do the trial and error for me. What about you, Brian? What do you think? Well, you know what? I think it's a brilliant idea, and let me tell you why. Because someday I'm going to have a walk-in humidor, and I'm going to have a big pile of stuff. And I'll never have to leave that humidor for anything. I'll have a fridge in there full of food and full of Coke, and I'll have my kitty litter mound, you know, to take care of other things. And, hey, if it regulates the humidity, I think that's great. But anyway, <laughs> seriously, though, I... Yeah, it, it just seems to me like, you know, just go get a puck or, you know, whatever. Um... If you get something bigger, get one of the larger hydras or oasises or whatever. Um, 
Yeah, I, w I would stick with something that's that's geared towards cigars, just because you know, yeah, I just for all the reasons you guys stated, basically, it just uh, I don't know. I, I it just seems it seems like there should be something in here. I, I should have a really good line at, about tying this kitty litter to dog rocket cigars, and maybe you can you know put that together for yourselves, I, I suppose. But uh, yeah, it just. It's, it kind of seems to dishonor the cigars in addition to being kind of a little suspect. So, you know, that's, that's my thoughts on it. Anybody, anybody else have anything they want to add to that? Yeah, actually, Jerry brought it to my attention. I forgot about it. You need, if you are going to go this route, uh, you need to go and pick up the clear ones. You don't want the, the blue exquisite, exquisite cat beads. They're the, uh, the ones that have uh, deodorizer in them, so don't definitely don't go that route. Uh, if you if you insist on trying them or you want to give them a shot, uh, try to track down the clear ones. Yeah, it looks like we're ready for uh, question number three. Um, uh, Tom and Ed, you guys want to take that one? Hey guys, love the show. Um, this is Steve Ratters from the Fan Forum. And my question is, do you guys ever think about what cigars you pair together when doing a multiple cigar day? Because I find like some of the Maduro cigars, like the uh, Pargus Black Label, I really enjoy on their own. But when I have them second, like after Camacho Corojo, I find them to be kind of nasty. But I just uh, was wondering if you guys had any thoughts on cigar pairings. Thanks, and keep up the good work. Bye. Well, um... I don't really plan uh, my, my cigars uh, too much. I, I generally will, uh, beyond beyond you know maybe picking something milder in the morning, uh, if I'm going to smoke anything milder, you know, that day. If it, uh, I'll generally go for that. Um, yeah, I really don't. I really don't think too much about it. I, I tend to uh, give myself a little bit of time in between cigars. I don't usually light one up immediately after the other, except maybe at a herf or something. So. Uh, get some water you know some coffee try to get the palate cleaned off and let it let it heal you know recover a little bit between you know if necessary but uh, um, I, don't, I don't really plan it out so much I just you know milder cigars in the morning they're less they seem to be less enjoyable in the evening and that's about as far as I take it you know keep the fuller stuff for the for the evening typically um, yeah, what about you all well I typically do the same thing I don't give it a whole lot of thought either um, Usually when I have a couple of cigars together, I'm, I'm on my way out the door, so I'll, you know, I'll grab a few cigars, toss them in either my travel humidor or a, a Ziploc bag, and then you know, when, I'm ready the first, when, I, when I'm ready to light the first one up, I'll just look at what's there and grab the milder one of the bunch. You, know, it's, uh, you don't want to overpower the next one, even though I'm not going to be smoking it right away. If I smoke a, something like an El Cobre or a Leva Series V first thing, earlier on in the day and then I go to try to follow it up with like a Siri G Maduro or uh, or something else that's kind of in the medium range you know it just kind of washes it out so I always try to space it and and put the heavier stuff later on in the day but that's as that's as far as I go I don't do any specific pairing you know like I'm gonna smoke this one at this time and then three hours later I'm gonna smoke this one because I know it'll complement it I, you know I don't go that far just uh, I just work with the body and, and deal with it that way what about you guys? Ed? Yeah, same here. I never plan my cigars. I never know what I'm going to smoke. I got so many here. And uh, I just walk around and check out uh, something I haven't smoked in a while. And uh, uh, basically, that's how I pick my cigars. And again, also, if I'm going to go somewhere in the evening and take my, uh, my uh, humidor with me, uh, I'll pick three, four cigars give a couple of them away and smoke two of them uh, but I, I don't plan it I, I'll enjoy uh, uh, two full body cigars one after the other the same way I don't find much of a difference because I keep washing my pellets with water you know and uh, so basically uh, so you, you don't have a particular cigar maybe you like in the morning as opposed no, to the afternoon? No, I really don't. Now, could, no. could you smoke like a Siri V in the I morning? I can smoke a, morning, a full body in the morning wow. and I'm just as satisfied. I yeah. can't do that. Uh, no. I generally, like in the morning, let's say it's Saturday morning, I'll get a, I'll do like a Rocky Patel Connecticut or something with coffee. Really? Or something nice yeah. and mild. Which is okay. I'll leave I mean, a Siri G uh, Cameroon or something. Yeah. And then maybe in the afternoon after dinner I'll do like a, like a Camacho or a Dom Most of the times my, my smoking is in the evening anyway. Uh, we get together with a couple of friends and uh, 
just smoke a couple of good cigars, no so, plans, so you're hardcore. and uh, and enjoy them as we smoke them. Yeah. So you're pretty hardcore. Yeah, I, <laughs> I, I I don't smoke very many light body cigars. I really don't care for them. Yeah, you know? oh, that's cool. But I know a lot of people that does, and they like it in the morning. Smoke a nice light body cigar, have a nice cup of coffee. I don't mind Sunday morning. I'll have a full body with my cup of coffee. And wow, I, I can't do that. I, get I sick. enjoy it. Yeah. I would actually get sick. So uh, it's it's a matter of uh, uh, every, uh, everybody has different taste, you know. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, it really doesn't bother me what I smoke. Cool. No. Yeah. Well, you're. Now, Ed, is there something that you won't smoke in the morning? Something that's just a little too much, or you, you know, you, you know, everything is fair game in the morning for you. Well, uh, yeah, like a triple Maduro Camacho or yeah, something. Yeah, pr I probably uh, well a triple Maduro Camacho. I, I will smoke it in the morning. It's uh, I mean I love that cigar. I guess, so. I guess that's the real deal. I don't yeah, know. I I uh, no, that's a cigar that I would smoke in the morning. That's crazy. Yeah, that's crazy. Uh, something I wouldn't smoke. I don't know. Opus X. Well, Opus X, I won't smoke it anyhow. I, I have no, uh, I have no taste buds for that cigar. I'm sorry. <laughs> awesome, awesome. That's the uh, strongest, tasteless cigar I've ever tasted. I, a lot of people love them, but I can't. You heard it here her first, uh, everybody. I, I, I can't Opus handle X. that cigar. <laughs> it's a, it's one of the most powerful uh, cigars, but tasteless that I've ever smoked. There you have uh, it. I smoked one uh, 1996, I think was the first year that they made them. And it's been, a friend of mine gave it to me and uh, New Year's uh, Eve, I lit it up and I'll tell you, I took four or five drags and it was the same as the ones I smoked previous. I couldn't smoke it. I just so, didn't enjoy that cigar. So that's the answer to Walt's question. You won't smoke an Opus X in the morning. The Opus X? No. Okay, there you have it. There you have it, guys. You got it, Walt. That's it. <laughs> yeah, I just can't stand that cigar. Opus X hating. All right. Cool. That's, I think that's pretty good, right, guys? But it's only because <laughs> there's no taste for me there. You know, there's. Uh, uh, I can smoke it and smoke it and there's... The cigar doesn't uh, give me anything that I'm looking for, you know? And that's it. That was a good rant, Ed. You know. That was a nice one. I got, I'm glad we got it on uh, your questions, my answers, for posterity. <laughs> would do good on your uh, Ed's, Ed's random thoughts, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. You know, I was thinking. I was thinking in terms of the the uh, smoking the full ones in the morning. I've actually, I actually can smoke full, full-bodied cigars in the morning. I, every now and then, uh, I don't know. I'll smoke like a, a, a Camacho Corojo Maduro that I've really been enjoying, and I don't really have any issues with that. I, my my policy is I, I smoke the mild ones in the morning because if I don't smoke them, then I'm never going to smoke them at all. And I, you know, I have some to go through, so that's that's part of it. Well, that brings the, the questions to a close in segment one, so uh, why don't we touch on the cigars? My, uh, my Serie V is burning great. The flavor is spectacular. This cigar just tastes great. This is one of the newer ones, and uh, you know it's got a nice dark wrapper on it. And really rich, full flavors. I, just, I, I can't get enough of these things. I smoke a lot of the Double Robustos and a lot of the Lanceros, and I don't know. I, I just haven't gotten tired of them yet. What about you, Brian? How's your Padilla Obsidian doing? Uh, my my uh, my obsidian is it's going pretty well. It actually seems to go pretty fast. Uh, it's tasting great with this coffee. It, I'm getting some chocolate out of that, and it's mixing well with the coffee. So I'm enjoying it. You know, the burn's a little a little funky. It's uh, yeah, no no big no big deal. It's uh, staying lit and tasting good. So I th I think it's a great smoke. Uh, how about uh, you guys, uh, Tom and Ed? Uh, this is rocks. Uh, this is a good smoke. It, this is one of the few. Ed made an exception tonight, and he's letting me smoke in his shop. Uh, <laughs> but I'll let you give them a quick rundown of the smoke. The uh, this one here. Yeah. Yeah, the El Rico is a uh, full body smoke. Uh, it's a, it's got a little bit of nuts in here now and then, but it's a nice taste. It's a very nice taste. I'm trying to see what it tastes like, but I want to say a little mocha in there too. Uh, it's full body and uh, pretty enjoyable. 
pretty I'm enjoyable. Digging I'm digging it. Yeah, you like it? Yeah, yeah. I'm puffing mine right down. Yeah, I know, I see that. You're taking your time, I'm sitting <laughs> smoking. Yeah, he's puffing his down pretty good. So. But as uh, for, for Walt liking the, the V's, I don't blame you. That's one of my favorite cigars. I can smoke that cigar three times a day and yep. never think about anything else. And the price is good, too. You can't. And the it. price is good, yeah, exactly. Why on earth am I not smoking a, a V? That just occurred to me. I, I have a bunch. And... Walt, if you told me you, you were smoking them, I, I would have lit one of those up, too. <laughs> yeah, we could have agreed on that easily. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's a nice smoke. I... Uh... One of their best cigars, I think, in my view. Well, there you have it for segment one. So we're going to take a quick little break, and uh, we'll be right back with segment two. And maybe see if we can get a, a rant out of Ed about the Anejo, see if he's got the same opinion. <laughs> we'll be right back.